What are the cheapest, healthiest grains that we eat? Today, we're gonna to talk about that. Hey, hey, I'm Steph from Cheapskate Cook and welcome to my kitchen. Today, we're gonna to be discussing some of the cheapest, healthiest grains that we eat and this kind of goes in with our series about how you can eat healthy on a tight budget and build your own frugal real food kitchen. It's kind of like when you are at the grocery store and you see the other shoppers and you can't help but notice what's in their cart and subconsciously we compare the prices and that's because we love gathering other information and seeing what works for other people. This is why grocery hauls are so popular on YouTube and on blogs and we just love seeing what works for other people and pulling what is interesting or helpful for us and applying it to our own lives. So in this series I am breaking down each food group and talking about what works for us, what we've bought, why we bought it, and how it has helped us save money and eat healthier over the last 10 years. First, a question. What do you think about grains? because some people think that they're okay and some people think that they are the root of all evil and disease. So I'd love to hear in the comments where you sit on that subject and how you got to that conclusion because it's really important. It's a big food group. It's um, Living without it is can be very expensive and so it's something that we have to consider when we are trying to eat healthy on a tight budget. For us, we've decided that some grains we are okay with and some we are not and uh, the reality is that grains have been the lifeblood of many cultures for thousands of years and um, even though our modern food industry has probably messed with them a bit there are a few that our family's okay with for the sake of budget and for the sake of health the first grains that i want to share with you are oats so we eat a lot of oats at our house they're cheap, they're versatile, and they are gluten-free, which is something that we have to keep in mind for our family. Because we feed a small army, or at least a group of kids who eat like a small army, we have had to transition from buying individual canisters to buying them in bulk. And that's just because we realize that because we eat them so regularly, we can buy them in bulk and we're not gonna be wasting anything. And that is the cheapest way that we can buy oats per pound. So we find a local co-op or some kind of group that's going in and buying 50 or 25 pound bags of oats and we will either buy one straight up just for us and store it or we will split it with somebody so that we're only needing to eat 10 pounds or 20 pounds depending on how big the bags are. If we can't find them in bulk, then we buy them from Aldi or Costco or Walmart because those are the best prices we've been able to find in our area. We use oats in oatmeal, surprise, surprise, and we use it in baked oatmeal, which I have a simple allergy-free recipe on my site, and I will grind them up in my food processor or my blender in order to make oat flour because Oat flour can be really expensive, but if you just grind up your oats at home, then it's as cheap as oats. And uh, that's just a really great way that we've been able to do some gluten-free baking or some just regular real food baking while saving some money. The next grain that we eat regularly is rice. So rice is cheap, it's eaten all over the world, it's been eaten for thousands of years, so it can be pretty clean and it is easy to find in bulk, easier than anything else to find in bulk. So if we are um, eating it regularly, that which we are, then we go ahead and try to buy it in bulk or we buy it from like Walmart or something. And we try to get non-GMO or organic varieties because we eat so much of it. Um, sometimes this isn't always possible, but it's one of our goals. We use it obviously um, just you know, over soup or over chili or over stews or something like that. But one of our favorite ways to eat rice is a simple yellow Mediterranean rice. So you just take white or brown rice and you add a few seasonings and you have a really flavorful side dish or something that you can use over, um, under curry or something like that. The recipe for that is on my site and I'll try to leave a link below, but that's just one of the ways that we have learned to appreciate rice more because we aren't 
naturally in love with rice, you know, like we'd rather eat rolls or something like normal Americans. So that leads us right into flour or wheat or whatever you want to call it. So we have done this a couple of different ways over the years. We um, have a grain mill, so you can actually buy the wheat berries, which look like um, kind of like rice or something like that, and grind the flour fresh in your own kitchen. So we have a grain mill thing that does that for us. Um, we don't have a source for getting the wheat berries anymore because ours dried up, so we um, are currently just buying flour. And that, we just try to get, you know, like a whole wheat flour from Walmart or something like that, someplace where we can buy a non-GMO kind. Um, and then we also use unbleached flour for sourdough starter um, because that, our starter just t tends to work better if we have just a white unbleached flour. So I think there are lots of opinions when it comes to wheat, and like I said, we err on the side of gluten-free-ish, uh, heavy on the ish part. <laughs> But um, in general, we just try to stick to whole grains and we try to learn how to properly prepare them and um, that's why we have the sourdough, that kind of thing. There are lots of opinions in this area, but basically we just try to find the best price with what we have now and we have a rule, okay? So the reason why I mentioned flour as opposed to bread or crackers or something like that is because we try to make a lot of the stuff that is derived from flour, okay? So we try to make um, our own bread, not all the time, but for the most part. We try to make muffins, we try to make rolls, we try to make uh, just a lot of things. We don't make crackers because we're not crazy. I have made crackers before, um, but that's a lot of work, you know? So we just we just have this rule and the reason why we have that rule is because it encourages us to eat healthier and it encourages us to think twice about um, whether we want to have this particular food because if we know that we want um, I don't know we want spaghetti with bread or something like that then we know we're gonna have to bake the bread and maybe we just it's not just not worth it because it's a lot of work and so we'll have spaghetti with a salad or something so in that way, it kind of helps us eat healthier. We just try to set up some rules to help encourage us to make healthier choices in our day-to-day -day lives. The next grain I wanna talk about is beans and legumes because we eat a lot of these. We have also learned how to make beans from scratch. So we just buy the dry beans and we toss them in the slow cooker or the uh, instant pot or sometimes on the stove top. It just depends on what season of life we're in. Sometimes some methods are easier than others. We've also bought them canned before because we're normal people. But in general, we try to buy the dry beans and cook them from scratch because that cuts down on salt content. It encourages us to, um, to eat a lot of beans that week because we made a whole batch. And we've just found that that works really well for our budget. If you want to learn how we cook dry beans, I actually have another um, YouTube video where I show I just showed the three methods by which we make beans. And I have a couple of recipes on my site. We have cumin beans, which is like a simple pinto bean recipe that we use as a base for all kinds of recipes that we eat throughout the week. And a white bean chili recipe. The last two grains that we eat regularly are um, like corn, so we use that for cornmeal or popcorn, which we use in our air popper or something like that. We also eat tortilla chips because that's just an easy thing to find organic or whatever. And we also buy like rice pasta. So we do sometimes buy regular pasta, it just depends on the price and it depends on the season and whatever. The beans, rice pasta, and popcorn are items that I tend to just buy at Aldi or Walmart or Costco or someplace like that because those are generally the best prices that I can find and I found that buying them in bulk doesn't really save us a whole lot because we either eat a lot of them and then it kind of defeats the purpose of buying them in bulk to last a long time or we just, um, it just doesn't add up. So Aldi is one of my favorite places. Trader Joe's is a great place to get rice pasta if you need gluten-free or something like that. Um, like I said, Costco, Walmart, all of those. We buy a lot of our dry beans from Walmart because those are just 
good prices and you can get them in the one or two pounds and it works great. So there are two categories of grains that we specifically try to avoid and this is for both health reasons and for budgeting reasons. The first thing we try to avoid is highly processed snack food like crackers and cookies and prepackaged granola bars and stuff like that. And that's because either they are conventional and so they're loaded with a lot of ingredients and a lot of sugar and stuff that we are generally trying to avoid or they are very expensive because prepackaged healthy food can be very expensive. Now this is a guideline, not a rule. So depending on the needs that we have that month, then we might try to, you know, scrounge up some extra money and buy some really good granola bars or something like that. Or we just keep some crackers on hand for guests because we know that sometimes our food is weird and we don't want our guests to be weirded out. It's all about balance and it's about finding ways that real food can fit into your real life and just finding what works for you in the season that you're in. So the second category that we try to avoid is specialty grains like wild rice or farro or barley or something like that. And that's just because I've found that they tend to be more expensive and I can usually substitute them for a grain that we already have on hand. So that saves us money. Um, it saves me headaches at the grocery store trying to find specialty ingredients and it just keeps everything more simple. Grains are a staple in most diets around the world and so these are the ones that we have found are the cheapest and healthiest and that work for our family. And I hope getting a peek into our kitchen will help you kind of take some of these ideas and apply them to your kitchen. And I hope that this helps you save money. I'm Steph from Cheapskate Cook. Thank you so much for visiting my kitchen. And if you want a list of all of these grains that we try to eat and the ones that we try to avoid, you can go ahead and check the link in the description. And I hope to chat with you again soon.